the duty of the elders, priests, teachers, deacons, and members of the Church of Christ. An apostle is an elder, and it is his calling to baptize and to ordain other elders, priests, teachers, and deacons, and to administer bread and wine, the emblems of the flesh and blood of Christ, and to confirm those who are baptized into the church by the laying on of hands for the baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost, according to the scriptures and to teach, expound, exhort, baptize, and watch over the church, and to confirm the church by the laying on of the hands and the giving of the Holy Ghost, and to take the lead of all meetings. The elders are to conduct the meetings as they are led by the Holy Ghost according to the commandments and revelations of God. The priest's duty is to preach, teach, expound, exhort, and baptize and administer the sacrament, and visit the house of each member, and exhort them to pray vocally and in secret, and attend to all family duties. And he may also ordain other priests, teachers, and deacons. And he is to take the lead of meetings when there is no elder present. But when there is an elder present, he is only to preach teach, expound, exhort, and baptize, and visit the house of each member, exhorting them to pray vocally and in secret and attend to all family duties. In all these duties, the priest is to assist the elder if occasion requires. The teacher's duty is to watch over the church always and be with and strengthen them and see that there is no iniquity in the church, neither hardness with each other, neither lying, backbiting, nor evil speaking, and see that the church meet together often, and also see that all the members do their duty. And he is to take the lead of meetings in the absence of the elder or priest, and is to be assisted always in all his duties in the church, by the deacons, if occasion requires. But neither teachers nor deacons have authority to baptize, administer the sacrament, or lay on hands. They are, however, to warn, expound, exhort, and teach, and invite all to come to Christ. Every elder, priest, teacher, or deacon is to be ordained according to the gifts and callings of God unto him and he is to be ordained by the power of the Holy Ghost, which is in the one who ordains him. The several elders composing this Church of Christ are to meet in conference once in three months, or from time to time as said conferences shall direct or appoint. And said conferences are to do whatever church business is necessary to be done at the time. The elders are to receive their licenses from other elders by vote of the church to which they belong, or from the conferences. Each priest, teacher, or deacon who is ordained by a priest may take a certificate from him at the time, which certificate, when presented to an elder, shall entitle him to a license which shall authorize him to perform the duties of his calling, or he may receive it from a conference. No person is to be ordained to any office in this church where there is a regularly organized branch of the same without the vote of that church. But the presiding elders, traveling bishops, high counselors, high priests, and elders may have the privilege of ordaining where there is no branch of the church that a vote may be called. Every president of the high priesthood or presiding elder, bishop, high counselor, and high priest is to be ordained by the direction of a high council or general conference. The duty of the members after they are received by baptism. The elders or priests are to have a sufficient time to expound all things concerning the Church of Christ to their understanding, previous to their partaking of the sacrament and being confirmed 
by the laying on of the hands of the elders, so that all things may be done in order. And the members shall manifest before the church, and also before the elders, by a godly walk and conversation, that they are worthy of it, that there may be works and faith agreeable to the Holy Scriptures, walking in holiness before the Lord. Every member of the Church of Christ, having children, is to bring them unto the elders before the church, who are to lay their hands upon them in the name of Jesus Christ, and bless them in his name. No one can be received into the Church of Christ unless he has arrived unto the years of accountability before God and is capable of repentance. Baptism is to be administered in the following manner unto all those who repent. The person who is called of God and has authority from Jesus Christ to baptize shall go down into the water with the person who has presented himself or herself for baptism and shall say, calling him or her by name, Having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then shall he immerse him or her in the water and come forth again out of the water. It is expedient that the church meet together often to partake of bread and wine in the remembrance of the Lord Jesus. And the elder or priest shall administer it, and after this manner shall he administer it. He shall kneel with the church and call upon the Father in solemn prayer, saying, O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. The manner of administering the wine. He shall take the cup also and say, O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Any member of the Church of Christ transgressing or being overtaken in a fault shall be dealt with as the Scriptures direct. It shall be the duty of the several churches composing the Church of Christ to send one or more of their teachers to attend the several conferences held by the elders of the Church with a list of the names of the several members uniting themselves with the church since the last conference, or send by the hand of some priest, so that a regular list of all the names of the whole church may be kept in a book by one of the elders, whomsoever the other elders shall appoint from time to time. And also, if any have been expelled from the church, so that their names may be blotted out of the general church record of names. All members removing from the church where they reside, if going to a church where they are not known, may take a letter certifying that they are regular members and in good standing, which certificate may be signed by any elder or priest if the member receiving the letter is personally acquainted with the elder or priest, or it may be signed by the teachers or deacons of the church.